Good morning, everyone, on this Memorial Day Monday. I hope this finds you well and living your very best life in Jesus Christ. Memorial Day, as Americans have come to know it, began in the years immediately following the Civil War. But until World War II, most people knew it was as Decoration Day. I remember it being called that when I was small. It was a day to decorate with flowers and flags the graves of fallen soldiers and to remember those who had given, as Lincoln beautifully said, the last full measure of devotion to defend their nation. It was a day to remember what the honored dead had died to defend. It was intended for us to remember, and it's right and wise to remember the great price that some have paid to preserve the civil and religious freedoms we Americans have, the lar <laughs> be honest with you, the luxury to largely take for granted. But the importance of Memorial Day is more for our future than it is for our past. It's crucial that we remember the nightmares and why they happened. We must take time to remember the cost of our religious freedom was the lives of many, many heroes. And when we are, you know, tempted or start to forget, we do so at our own peril. The future of the United States depends in large amount on how well we collectively remember and cherish what liberty really is and the terror of tyranny. There's a high cost to forgetting. In the words of George Santayana's favorite, you know, famous aphorism, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. In my Memorial Day sermon last year, I said that I remember clearly being assigned by Mrs. Burns, my 8th grade English teacher, to memorize a poem for class that has stuck with me ever since. It's just a simple little poem, yet it expresses so many things about the pain and futility of war as our responsibility to those who have died so that we might have freedom. And with your permission, I will read it now. It's called In Flanders Fields. It was written in World War I by a military doctor named Lieutenant Colonel John McRae. He was inspired to write this after presiding over the funeral of a friend and fellow soldier, Alexis Helmer, and this was in May of 1915. The day after Helmer was killed, McRae noted how poppies quickly grew around the graves of those who died in the field. While sitting in the back of an ambulance, he composed this poem, and it's, like I said, called In Flanders Field. In Flanders Fields the poppies grow between the crosses, row on row, they mark our place, and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amidst the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders' fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from falling hands, from fail, excuse me, from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders' fields. As we commemorate Memorial Day as Americans, let's do it with profound gratitude for the extraordinary gift given to us when men and women laid down their lives for the sake of America's literal survival. And let us remember the past evils that we may not repeat them in the future. And as Christians, let us make every day, as long as it is called today, as it's referred to in Hebrews 3.13, a Memorial Day. Let us take care lest we forget the Lord as it says in Deuteronomy 6.12. Let us always remember the sacrifice of those hearers, but let us also remember always, every day, Jesus Christ and his sacrifice that makes it possible for us to look forward to that glorious day when death itself shall die. And I look forward to that day when men and women no longer need to lay in Flanders' fields. I hope you have a great holiday. I want you to know that I'm here should you need me, and I truly love you all.